Hello everyone, this is Matt with Amped Outdoors and in today's video I'm going to try and explain how to pick the right lithium battery for your boat trolling motor needs. Now with this it's very difficult, unlike fishing electronics where fishing electronics draw a specific amount of power, your boat trolling motors will vary in the amount of power that you draw. So it's very difficult for us to say how long the specific battery is going to last in your type of application. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to explain the factors that will determine how, how, how really trolling motors draw power um, and the different factors that will vary in how much power your trolling motor is drawing. And then I'm going to get into the different uh, type of batteries out there, whether you have a wet cell lead acid battery, your AGM battery, your lithium, and how they rate against each other in, in total usable capacity. And at the end, I want to try to kind of give you a recommendation or help you determine which battery and lithium battery specifically is best fit for your needs. So let's now take a look at, at how trolling motors draw power. Right, so you have different settings on your trolling motors and all the trolling motors are different. Now you're starting to see a lot of trolling motors coming out with a brushless system and brushless are more efficient than your traditional standard trolling motor. So they draw a little less power, it could be 20 to 30% less power um, in the brushless system. So they're definitely gonna draw less power. But a traditional trolling motor, you know, at speed one um, might draw anywhere from, you know, half an amp to one and a half amps and then at speed 10 I mean the trolling motor manufacturers can rate them as, as drawing upwards to 50 plus amps and, and that's really uncommon so when you look at your trolling motor max amp draw you know of 50 plus amps that's really on the heaviest boat undersizing your trolling motor in the worst conditions such as strong wind strong current so you're really not going to be drawing that and in this video uh, underneath, uh, we're going to have a couple of different links that will also help you determine, you know, the right battery for your needs and kind of explain how to do some of these things. But we also have a graph in there. We took a 36-volt trolling motor, uh, put it on a very common Ranger boat. Um, we did 100 amp-hour batteries on a 36-volt system, and we calculated amp draw. And these were in real calm conditions, so kind of give you an estimate of what your trolling motor may draw at different speeds. And every, every boat's going to be slightly different. So the factors that determine how much power your trolling motor is drawing it really comes down to the weight of your vessel. Uh, it really comes down to how you're using it. So what speeds? Higher speeds are far less efficient to go faster than at lower speeds. Lower speeds draw a lot less power. Um, then also you got to take a look at conditions such as wind and current because those can be very deceiving. Spot lock and strong current will draw a lot more power than spot lock on a calm uh, you know, nice day without current on the water. So those are some factors to take a look into uh, when determining your needs, how you're fishing. It's really hard to base a battery need based off the buddy system. My buddy has this and it lasts him all day. Well, your buddy's boat might be different. They might fish a little bit different than you and they might be fishing different waters. So take those things into consideration when picking out a battery. Now, the one thing I want to take a look at is it's easy to kind of compare a lot of these batteries in usable capacity. So a lot of you right now may have a traditional lead acid battery, and that's the most common battery out there, the interstates, and you know, you'll see all the different types carried at Walmart and everything that you throw in a boat, usually in a group size 24 or 27, 31 wet cell standard lead acid battery. Those batteries are traditionally about 50% efficient. So even though they might rate as 80 to 110 amp hours, you're typically only getting about half of that on your boat using a trolling motor. And what that means is that with lead acid batteries, you know, they'll start off at about 12.8 volts. And then uh, once you get that battery down to about 12 volts, that's about its usable capacity. Maybe under a load, you could drain that down to 11.5 volts. And that's about 50% of its usable capacity. Draining it any lower than that, you're putting a lot of damage or harm into that battery pack. And that's why they traditionally don't last you very long, is that they, they start creating this, the, you know, a, a cell um, type deposits or plating, so to say, that will depreciate that, that battery in the long run. And it's one of those things that's really not reversible. So AGM batteries are much more efficient. You can traditionally, on a 
good quality AGM, bring this battery down to about 80% state of charge. So use 80% of its usable capacity. So in that case, you might get, you know, in the, the battery shown here, which is about 105 amp hour battery, I can get about 80 amp hours out of this battery if I drain it down with a load down to 10.5 or without a load down to, you know, 11.5 volts. And that's about as far as you want to drain one of these. So to kind of recap those, you know, lead acid battery is going to be 50% efficient, anywhere from maybe 40 to 60 usable amp hours. A good AGM battery you can, you can get up to 80% efficiency out of, which is typically upwards to 80 amp hours usable capacity. Now the light, nice thing about lithium outside of weight, because I mean the one that I have here is, is, uh, is 67 pounds, you know, we're looking at 25 pound batteries right next to me. So, Yes, very lightweight in a lead acid in a, in a lithium battery, but also very efficient. So these are rated at 100% efficiency. And in our cases, a lot of times more than 100%. Meaning that if we give you a battery that's 100 amp hours, you can safely drain that battery down, uh, you know, to about 103, 104 amp hours uh, before the battery management system inside of it would kick in. So, yes, they can safely be drawn down 100%. When they reach 10 volts, the battery management system kicks in and you can no longer use that battery pack. That's why lithium stop at a certain point. They're just, you know, full power all day and then all of a sudden, boop, they'll stop once it reaches that voltage because that's a safety mechanism built into these that you don't have in lead acid batteries. That's why a lot of times your lead acid batteries do not last long. So a lithium battery being 100% efficient, you can already tell if I have a single 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery here, I'm gonna get about 20 to 30% more capacity than equivalent AGM and almost double the capacity of a traditional lead acid battery. So hopefully that helps you, you really understand the efficiencies within the batteries when picking these up. Now, how to set up a 12, a 24 or a 36 volt system. So if you have a 12 volt system on a boat, I, I always recommend, you know, minimum 80, 80 amp hour battery, uh, preferably that 100 amp hour battery will, should be suffice for a full day, depending on how you're using your boat, right? Running at higher speeds, obviously less efficient. You might, you know, at, at full speed on a boat, might only get three hours of operation. Low speeds on a boat, I mean, you might be able to get a couple of days. 24 and 36 volt systems are always going to be more efficient because you have those batteries uh, wired together in series. You have a higher voltage, more pounds of thrust. So they can oftentimes, you can get away with a smaller capacity battery pack, depending on what you had already and your, you know, your fishing style. So we came out with a 24 and a 36 volt, 50 amp hour battery. For the average person replacing their lead acid batteries in their boat, where you might only have that, you know, 40 to 60 amp hour battery, 50 amp hour battery might get you through an entire day. Some of those heavier users out there may want a higher capacity, and there's two different ways you can wire batteries, and we have another video on this. One, you can take 12 volt batteries and wire them in series. Preferably, get a 24, 36 volt battery that matches your system. A 24 and a 36 volt battery is always gonna be more efficient and last longer. Reason being is that the cells inside of them are all controlled through one battery management system, so they all stay equalized. With 12 volt batteries, you have to hook up a separate 12 volt power source to charge the batteries, and you have to fully charge them uh, to ensure that when you're discharging your batteries, they're at the same voltage and equalized. With batteries such as this, a single 24 or th single 36 volt, when charging the batteries, the cells will automatically stay balanced. And what you can do is add a second battery or even a third battery to the system in parallel to increase your capacity. And when you're wiring the batteries in, in parallel, charging them in parallel, discharging them in parallel, you're equalizing all of the cells within those battery packs with one charger. So a 24 or 36 volt dedicated battery is usually the most ideal way to go. A single 50 amp hour battery for the person just replacing your standard lead acid batteries in your boat. If you're a heavier user and you are, you know, you're running these big AGMs now, still running out of power, you may want to consider grabbing multiple batteries, wiring them in parallel to achieve higher capacity. So two 50 amp hour batteries wired in parallel would give you 24 or 36 volt, 100 amp hours uh, in total capacity. And that's gonna be for that heavier user out there. So that's kind of the best way to explain the difference between your standard batteries to, to lithium batteries. Um, hopefully this helps you determine what type of battery you may need for your application. You can always reach us, sales at ampedoutdoors.com. We're available on Facebook Messenger. And uh, 
you know, definitely like this video. If, if, if you are a fan of what we're doing with this educational series, uh, make sure you like us on YouTube. Um, subscribe to us, watch our other videos. We'll always be producing more content for you. Um, also, you know, check us out on social media. We release a lot of good information on there, both on Facebook and Instagram. So thank you for watching today.